Hey Herbal Friends, nice to see you again. Just finished doing my houseman duties, putting in this beautiful cedar walkway. Now there's something so nice about working with cedar. It's one of my favorite woods to work with. I have an idea. Let's go on a cedar adventure today. You want to join me? Yes! Come on, let's go! Whoa, this isn't quite what I had in mind. Uh, having a cedar sauna is, you know, one of my favorite ways to spend with this plant. Love this thing, but I think maybe if we're doing a herbal adventure, we want to go find some living cedar, yeah? All right, let's see what we can find. Whoa, this doesn't feel right. We want to be in a beautiful cedar forest, connecting with this plant, and fully ready to go. You ready? Let's try one more time. Ah, oh, now this is more like a beautiful cedar forest. Whoa! Uh, oops, one missing one thing. Just, uh, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be right back. Okay. All right, we got ourselves our gear. We're out in the forest, and the western red cedar has been calling. You know, I've been connecting with this a lot lately, enjoying it, nibbling it, just kind of spending time with this powerful plant. This is the tree of life. This is one of the most important medicines to the peoples of the West Coast. Now cedar grows in many different places on this planet. It grows all over the place. In fact, there's well over 30 species of cedar and everywhere that it grows, it's very valuable to the people. But here we have the Western red cedar and we have higher in the elevation, a yellow cedar. Cedar grows in these moist areas. We have this nice bit of water, lakes its roots wet. The Latin name for Western red cedar is Thuja placata. And placata is indicative of these plate-like leaves that are flat like this, whereas the yellow cedar has a square type leaf. That's the main way we can tell the difference, as well as the western red cedar grows quite a bit bigger and lives quite a bit longer. This tree can grow up to 100 meters tall and it can live up to a thousand years. It's a long time for a tree. Cedar likes to show up around these waterways but it also likes to show up around the edges of forests and on the edges of areas. We'll find big old cedar groves where it's nice and moist, but typically it's kind of an edge runner and it holds the banks of the forest. We see that it likes to grow around Douglas fir and hemlock. Those are the two predominant trees that it likes to share space with. The cedar also happens to be the kind of grandmother tree that holds in so much abundance and life for the forest around it. Now this plant is very sacred to the native peoples of the West Coast. In fact, it is the tree of life. It is the provider, the great provider that takes care of them. The old story goes that before cedar ever existed, there was a grand chief who took care of the people, who fed them, who clothed them, who housed them, who made sure that everything was in abundance and taken care of. And when he died, he said, I will give you a tree that'll grow out of me, that'll provide all these things for you and hence the first cedar tree grew. And this plant has been used for everything that the peoples of the West Coast need. Because there is such a rich history in using this plant, it was used for almost everything. They made all kinds of parts of their society out of cedar, whether it was the housing, or whether it was basketry and fish netting, or canoes, dugout canoes. The long straight grains in cedar helped make it a really versatile wood. Plus it's quite lightweight and quite strong. So there's a lot you could do with it. One of the things that I thought was really cool that they'd make is they take these long branches, make them into nice coils, and they'd coil this up so it was a nice coil and make these tight pans and pots that would hold water. Now this would not only hold water, but it'd also be fire tempered and fireproof. So this is what they would cook with. Pretty interesting too, some of the ways in which this plant would show up in all their art and all the different parts of society. So. This was literally the tree of life. Cedar is one of the most sacred plants of this part of the world. It was used for almost everything. And it is one of those plants that fits into the medicine wheel. In fact, cedar is the direction of south, of abundance, of caring, of giving in the medicine wheel. Now, before we get started harvesting this, I'd like to create a little medicine wheel and offer up some plants in order to give my thanks and gratitude to this one for being such a powerful healer. Because I know when we connect with plant medicine, if we honor and respect the plants, we start to build relationships with them. And this is how we can develop our own intuition and our own learning how to show up in the world from working with these plant allies. The plants of the medicine wheel were sweetgrass, sage, tobacco, and cedar. 
All right, so first we're gonna start with sweetgrass. Right. This happens to be north. Now sweetgrass helps bring in spirit, higher spiritual function. North is the element of wisdom. East is tobacco. Tobacco helps give clarity. South is cedar. We're gonna offer some of our wild harvest cedar tips from last year. And sage happens to be west. Sage is clearing, moving away of lower spirits. And center, of course, is balance, life, energy. So for this, we're gonna offer water. Today, we are here to connect with cedar. Cedar, will you please join us and bring your medicine forward so that we may share it with ourselves and those who need it. I bring you these four gifts. Now, Grandmother Cedar had a very significant spiritual place in the communities of the West Coast people. This was considered to be one of Spirit's assistants, here to help ward off evil and ward off spells. Now, there's all kinds of witchcraft that they believed in in this part of the world back then, and so Cedar would be an ally, and often little figurines were made out of Cedar to protect people, but so were the headdresses and the totem poles that were crafted with cedar were there as protective to ward off evil ways. Now one of the old myths is you see this big old cedar stump back here? Because cedar also represented longevity to the people, cedar often when a baby was born, the afterbirth would be placed into the cedar stump to help increase longevity of the child so they live a long, rich, full life. Medicine men would also consider this to be one of their most powerful allies for helping to protect the tribe. One of the big taboos with cedar is how you harvest it. And if it's not harvested consciously with offerings, then it may curse the person. And this is one of the areas I think that the Western mind has lost track of, is this idea of ethics around connecting with plants before we ask to use them. So cedar, being one of those valuable resources on this part of the world has been chopped down all over the place. In fact, there's not very many big old cedars like this. This is a second growth. We have our first growth over here. But first growth cedars are very rare on the West Coast and they've been chopped down. Many believe that if you didn't harvest cedar with proper respect, you may be cursed by other cedars. So we want to be careful today when we're harvesting this, making sure that we show respect to it and that we're connecting with it. Because right now, we want to harvest the leaves. We're going to work with these spring tips. That's where a lot of the abundant medicine is. These small ones have all these fresh tips, and that's where the chi of the plant is. That's where the energy flow is. This is what we're looking for in the spring, is this best form of energy. So first off, I'm gonna start with just a little nibble of one of those to kind of connect in with it. Now, hmm, has so much essential oils in it, just such a fragrance. Now you all know the smell of cedar if you've been around it. It's like, wow. There's an oil called thujone that's in there, and that is one of the most medicinal aspects of this plant. When we roll this, we smell that. When we cut the wood, when we tease it, and we scrape it, we're gonna smell that thujone. Cedar oil is up to 50% thujone. Now, this is the same stuff. It's a terpene type ketone that is in other plants too. It's the same stuff that's in wormwood that makes absinthe. In fact, it is slightly toxic, but it's part of what makes absinthe so crazy. So, oh wow, that smell is just so potent. Now the other thing about this is it's quite antimicrobial. What that means is it's helpful for all kinds of pathogenic kind of bacteria, virus, fungi, all these things. So it's antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal. So in that sense, there's a lot of different medicines we can use this for. now. I'd like to just start with these little leaf tips because this is where I think my favorite part of the medicine is to work with is these little leaf tips. And we're gonna harvest a few of these today and start to make tea with them. This is one of the herbs that we put into a tea we make called green chi. And it is just in small amounts because too much cedar, too much antimicrobial is hard on the body. 
Cedar leaf tea can be prepared in two different ways. One is we can leave it in cold water overnight as a cold infusion, or two, we can make a decoction. Now because thujo in the essential oil is not that accessible in water, we're not gonna get as much of a potency out of that as we might out of a cedar tincture or a cedar oil. Although both cedar tincture and cedar oil are not meant to be used internally. We might be using a maximum dose of five drops as an internal usage. Now, for making tea, what are we gonna use this for? How is it gonna work as medicine in the body? The biggest thing we see with essential oils like that that are antimicrobial is that they are antipathogenic. So one way we might work with this is to make it into a tea bath. We might use it externally on all kinds of sores, inflammation. In fact, they say for dried skin and psoriasis, cedar leaf tea is useful, as well as for all kinds of infected wounds. So you might take a cedar leaf tea, rub it on infected wounds, as well as things like fungal infections. So if we've got athlete's foot or toe fungus or any of those kinds of things, cedar leaf tea might be useful for that. Because it's got antiviral compounds, we also have seen this to be work, working with warts, as well as venereal diseases. So for warts, we might be using it in long-term applications till it pulls away the root of the wart. For venereal diseases and STDs, this has been typically used to, as a wash over that area to help cleanse it, having those antiviral compounds. It's a lot of potency. Traditionally, this tea was used for things like tuberculosis, but we might also find for any kind of lung infection, coughs, or colds. Now, one of the things we know is that it's high in vitamin C, but it also has that essential oil that helps open up the breathing airways. So we're gonna get better respiratory function when we use small amounts of cedar. I also like to just chew on the tips. Hmm, just like a little chew. There's all kinds of ways in which they've been used in the mouth. As a tea, we might rinse the mouth for helping get rid of any kind of bacteria and fungus in there, but also chewing on the spring buds was typically used for toothache and any kind of inflammation in the mouth. It's just that flavor that stays with you for so long. But one thing we need to note about things that are antimicrobial, those antipathogenic herbs, you are mostly microbes and bacteria by cell count. So these are slightly anti-life to you. So taking too much cedar could be a problematic thing. So recommended in small doses, don't be using this all the time. This is a specific for a specific condition. For me, the specific use of cedar in the spring is to clear congestion, to move stagnation out of the body. So I'm gonna be using little bits of this, chewing on it, making a little tea, putting it in with my green chi and electrolytes, mineralizing with all the other green plants here in the spring. As a tincture, cedar has been used in combination with other herbs. It's often not taken on its own. Usually the tincture is used externally, but if we use it internally, those five drops is the maximum dose. For chronic fatigue, for helping revitalize the tissues, we might take cedar and mix it with other adaptogenic herbs like the Devil's Club that we saw earlier. We also might mix it with things like reishi. In this part of the world, we might add in some of the other tonic medicinal mushrooms or some of the other fur tips, these kinds of things to invigorate the body. A famous herbalist, Michael Moore, who has passed now, says that he would use cedar tips for intestinal infection, for deep chronic intestinal infection. Now this would be used specifically for short periods of time and in small dosage, but that antimicrobial effect would help to cleanse pathogens in the gut. How else can we use this plant? I really like the idea of making baths and bathing in plants. So we've been connecting with that more lately, adding these tea herbs to our bath. And this is a really good one. It could be used for all kinds of dry skin, but also as a poultice. And we might wrap some of that, that tea water on us or put it around us for things where we have like inflammation and arthritis and all these types of things. Typically, the inner bark was another part that was used as medicine. We're gonna see, we're gonna just pull a little bit back here so we can have a look at it. You see there's always two layers to the bark. So we've got the outer and the inner. Whenever we're working with bark medicine, we wanna make sure not to wring the tree, otherwise we kill it. But in this case, I just wanna take a little bit to show and share with you. This inner bark is quite a bit different from the outer bark and has different properties. So this inner bark would be often chewed and or made into tea as well. Women would use this as a vaginal douche when there was infections, but also they take little bits of this and chew it 
and it is said to help bring on menstruation when it is late. This inner bark was used by so many different peoples for things like packing wounds and used as bandages. For women, they would use this as a menstrual pad and they would make these kind of nets with this. So as you can see, there's a lot of different ways we can use this plant, but it's also one of those slightly toxic plants. So we have to be careful and not use too much. Now, I know if you're like me and you've ever gotten a cedar sliver, ouch, that is an infectious wound that is hard. You notice it and it's painful and it pusses and it's hard to get out. So be careful with cedar. A little bit goes a long way and medicine is always in the dose. Take a little bit of this one and work with it, connect with it, even just spend time with cedar. That's a huge piece of its medicine. All right, we'll see you guys soon. I think I'm going off to hit my cedar sauna one more time. Ah, back in the cedar sauna again. Thanks for joining me today and connecting with cedar, the tree of life. This is a powerful medicine and just one that I am so appreciative to be connecting with. So. If you want to join me on any other herbal adventures, subscribe, check out our YouTube channel. We've got all kinds of information and we just love sharing about plants. Plus, comment below and tell us what you want to hear about, what you want to see in this coming season. We've got lots more opportunity to make awesome videos and we want you to be part of that. See you soon.